We claim that we follow Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Brothers tell me all the time, cuz I'll die for his honor. Wallahi, I'm ready to die for his honor. I say, wow, mashallah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you for such a noble intention. But brother, wallahi, I don't need you to die for his honor. I need you to live for his honor. I want you to live like him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Your beloved prophet. And of course, you see, this, this is the side of Rasulullah that we don't want to talk about. Wallahi, my brothers, I take an oath by Allah. Forgive me if these words are a bit harsh. But I tell you now, and this is my own personal opinion. Wallahi, even our love for the deen, even our love for the Sahaba is a love of dunya. Nobody he loves Umar ibn al-Khattab. Most loved, probably one of the most loved. He's definitely my favorite. Nobody he loves Umar ibn al-Khattab because he had permanent marks on his cheeks from crying out of fear of Allah. Nakaz, we love Umar ibn al-Khattab because when his name was mentioned, the kafari used to shake in their knees. No one loves Umar ibn al-Khattab because he had permanent marks on his shoulders. Why? Because he was servicing the community in the late hours of the night when everyone was asleep and wasn't watching. You don't love Umar for that. You love Umar because he was a man, brother. When he rocked up, cause everyone buckled. The Prophet of Allah who we claim we love. Because I'm sure you're thinking in your mind, Wallah brother, may Allah reward you. Very nice khutbah, very emotional, very touching. Because you don't understand what this person did to me is unforgivable. And I repeat, there is absolutely no scenario. I don't care if he shot your mother, he shot your father, he raped your child. I don't care what scenario you could possibly throw at me. Forgiveness is the key. The Prophet of Allah for 13 years in Mecca, leave this with me, 13 years in Mecca, prosecuted, harmed, sworn at, spat at, had dust thrown in his face. They killed his companions for what? For what? What crime did he do? What crime did he do? What? He looked at someone's sister? What? He didn't cough up his money at the end of the business transaction? What crime did he do? 13 years! They boycotted him and his family for three years. Sahaba said we were eating the leaves of the trees until our droppings, our droppings became like the droppings of animals for three years. For what? What crime? They divorced his daughters. Sumayya Radhiallah in front of the Prophet publicly. I'm not telling you Allah, you know what, that they started sending around a WhatsApp video about what. No, 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 no. Publicly, live, in front of the Prophet and his companions, they grabbed Sumayya, a woman, a woman. They grabbed her publicly. They opened her legs in front of her husband and her son. And they ran the spear into her private parts until they killed her. They exiled him from his land, Mecca. Exiled him for 18 months in Medina. 18 months he was crying. Why? Because he was missing, he was missing the Kaaba so much. They stabbed his pregnant daughter. As a result, she lost her child. Eight or six, a few months later, she ended up dying in Medina. He buried every one of his children while he was alive, except for Fatima. In Uhud, you know, it's one thing to go to war and kill. That's fine, he killed the man. In Uhud, they massacred the dead. His uncle Hamza, they cut his nose off, they cut his ears off, they ripped his liver out. Him took a bite from his liver and spat it on the floor. Sahaba said, when the Prophet of Allah seen Hamza, we never seen him cry like he cried when he seen his uncle Hamza. In narrations, he prayed Janazah for his uncle 70 times. So much of 
and so much pain for years and then when Fatah Makkah came and now he comes back victorious with an army of 10,000 companions an army the which Arabia never seen in their lives men who at the drop of a word were happy to give their lives just to see him smile he enters into the Mah he enters into the Haram of Mecca 10,000 soldiers surrounding and those people that harmed him for years and years and years not Muslims and I'm asking you to forgive your Muslim brother God forbid I should ask you to forgive kafar. I'll be labeled on the payroll, scholar for a dollar. Wallahi, you, wallahi, you mop the floor with me. So I'm not even going to dare to go down that road. God forbid we should follow the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Nah, no way, brother. He enters into the haram, 10,000 soldiers surrounding the haram. Those people that harmed him for years and years. Where are they going to go now, bro? Talk about the tables turning, huh? So he looks at them and he says to them, and, and what do you think I will do with you today? What do you think I will do today? They said, you're an honorable, generous person, the son of an honorable, generous person. The Prophet of Allah turns around and says to the kuffar, Go, every single one of you are free, I forgive you. Where's this sunnah in our lives, man? Where's this deen?